Ladies and gentlemen, we are taking a look at five dividend stocks coming from your questions in that comment section below. We are going to be diving down into two real estate investment trusts in the logistics and warehousing center. We're going to be talking about Pepsi and whether I'd be buying it at these valuations. They recently even just did an NFT drop we're going to be discussing. And we're also going to take a look at my hardest hit sector this year being the utility sector, where a lot of you have been asking me some comments about whether you should be buying there as well. So in the clarity of my transparency, for those of you looking for that juicy passive income, that monthly dividend cash flow, consider hitting that like button because first and foremost, we're going to be talking about my favorite to read to the top of the list being Stag Industrial here, folks. Now, many of you know of Stag and it is extremely rare for a real estate investment trust to be trading up 50% in a given year outperforming the broader markets with a starting yield of 3.17% here, guys, I'm just blown away. So let's try and talk about why I think this company is trading up. Now I've talked to you guys about Stag many of times before us focused read in the logistics and industrial warehousing uh, centers, which is insane at how fast this has been growing. Thanks to e-commerce and everybody moving into online and trying to manage this stuff through warehousing with their largest tenant being Amazon, which I've discussed guys at almost 4% and it's crazy to think they have companies like FedEx, BMW. I think they even supply stuff for Tesla as well. It's absolutely staggering. But one of the reasons I think the stock continues to grow is they drop news like it's going out of style. And they recently found a value add, in my opinion, which I think is huge because they're currently the nation's largest rooftop community solar project. I mean, it's kind of nuts to think some of the projects are powering 1,500 homes with a total uh, nationally of 25.5 megawatts of solar, uh, which is kind of insane because you're not going to be doing this with any other kind of real estate. I mean, you're not going to be doing it with residential. There's just not enough square footage, right? But when you're looking at the top of these buildings, guys, that is a lot of solar exposure in a lot of space that is not being used. So I think this company is continuing to find these really unique value adds. And two brothers, two peas, two peas to a pod. I got to talk about Granite here as well. Another one that I've been buying, trading up 34.29% being the Canadian counterpart to this. And I don't know why it's a Canadian counterpart. It's primarily the exact same company as Stag with a few tweaks and differences. First being that, you know, largely still exposed to the US with the vast majority of their properties, but still Canada coming in with a little hint there. And then they have some global exposure in Austria, Czech Republic, Germany, Netherlands, uh, really well diversified as well, in my opinion, if you want to kind of get a little more exposure outside of the US. But taking a look at this one, guys, uh, larger exposure to Amazon, which is incredible. Uh, Amazon's really gone out of their way to, uh, you know, kind of third party their way into this because they can't even own enough warehousing themselves. But Magna, uh, another great company making up the largest percentage. And this is what kind of makes me like stag a little more over granite is because this kind of one tenant makes up 31%. And I think Magna is a great company. It's going to be around for a while. But it's nice to see them slowly starting to diversify away from that since I've been holding it. But speaking about why this company might be trading up, I don't know. Maybe it's following suit with Stag. Maybe we're going to start seeing some solar roofs coming into play here. But more privately, guys, they just released uh, third quarter results. Uh, and they have $260 million of new acquisitions and developments. And they recently just increased the dividend 3.3%. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds with these companies. You're getting great monthly cash flow. We're talking about increasing dividends. And we're talking about capital growth, again, which is just nuts. The capital growth is nuts on these companies, right? So that's Granite Real Estate Investment Trust. I am not really pertainably buying these aggressively here, but I would like to pick up a little more Granite. Now let's talk about Pepsi. Uh, a lot of you have been asking me recently because I don't really discuss my consumer discretionary stocks. And Pepsi to me here, guys, is crazy expensive. I mean, I don't like looking at it as often because I mean, when we look at the five year return at 60%, maybe you were capping at a 3% dividend yield over the five years. So you're looking at maybe a 70 to 75% return total. It's just underperforming the market aggressively here. I mean, let's just take a look if you were to buy VOO over that same time period. I mean, I love it for the stability and knowing that, you know, if the markets went in a different direction, Pepsi would probably likely do better than the broader market. But at the same time, guys, when you're taking a look at, uh, you know, the Vanguard S&P up almost 25% and in the five years up 103%, I mean, you're really leaving almost 30% gains on the table by buying this company here. And honestly, guys, when we talk about the valuation of Pepsi here, I'm always a little discouraged because, I mean, look at the growth rate on this company. I mean, when we look year over year, this does not look like a Facebook. It does I mean, it trades for a way higher valuation than Facebook. It really reminds me of things like Costco and Walmart, where for some reason they just trade at these absolutely absurd valuations, but the free cash flow isn't exactly increasing. 
I mean, free cash flow is what we're using to pay the dividends, grow the company, et cetera, et cetera. And I mean, even just taking a look at some of the statistics here, the only thing that I really like, guys, is the fact that it's majority held by institutions, pension funds that offer that kind of stability to the stock price. So personally, no, um, I'm not buying Pepsi here. I mean, I feel like I overpaid for it and I'm up over 20% on the position. If you can pick it up on dips, if you want that stability, I mean, all, all the power to you. I would rather buy an index fund over it. But let's talk about this recent NFT drop, which they're doing for free, which I thought was brilliant, but I think there's been issues with it because it's kind of gone gold, cold turkey here since they announced this. So basically, they released a limited supply of 1,800 NFTs, uh, completely free. You just had to cover the gas fees on the Ethereum network, and you could get exposure to one of these. I signed up. I tried to get one. I absolutely couldn't. But since they've done the drop, I haven't heard anything else from it, guys. I mean, there hasn't been any new news release. I haven't been reading comments of people actually getting these things yet. I haven't seen the resales come up on OpenSea yet since they've done this. And I'm kind of confused if it actually worked out, if there were issues. I really don't know. And honestly, this is kind of a little speculative because I feel like you have to do all, all of this through link clicks on Twitter. It's very kind of convoluted for people that aren't really familiar with the crypto network and opening up specific NFT re related wallets. It's very confusing stuff. So I'm really curious to see how this has worked out or when they start reselling, if they even, you know, if people got them. So I'd keep an eye out for this, guys, because if more big companies are doing things like this, I would be getting my hands on it left, right, and center. And it is brilliant for a company like Pepsi to be doing this because you drop these for free, but in these smart contracts with these NFTs, it's likely that they are capturing some of the resale value. Every time someone buys this and trades it, Pepsi will likely collect a percentage. It's absolutely brilliant in my opinion, but like I said, guys, it's not enough to get me excited to be buying the company here. Let's talk about Northland Power, some of my utilities, which have been getting absolutely clobbered, guys. I am down 28% uh, from the all-time high coming into 2021 here. And a lot of people saying, would you buy Northland Power here? And honestly, guys, just like Pepsi, I'm not that intrigued. I'm going to tell you what I would be buying over Northland Power. Somebody made a great comment that they're not buying it because the dividend has not been increasing. This is a company that has not been increasing the dividend whatsoever. The best deal you get is through the drip enrollment where they give you like a 5% discount on any shares purchased through the drip. But unfortunately, this company has had a hard time executing on their plans. I mean, take a look at the EP, uh, their earnings through the EPS here. They've missed every single one this year. I have looked into all of their reports into why, and it all primarily comes down to that there's just not as much wind happening on their offshore wind projects at the North Sea in Germany, uh, which really sucks because they had issues trying to get those things up and running at the beginning of the year. Luckily, they do have a lot coming down their pipeline, but this year for power generation has just not been as robust as people were expecting. And the company is getting pretty close to their dividend payout ratio. Um, so, I mean, for this company right now, I wouldn't be buying it. I would just be sitting here and watching moving into next year. I'm still holding my shares. I'm not really intrigued to sell because I'm getting a whopping 5% yield off this guy. And I'm just primarily using it for cash flow today. I would not be buying it for dividend increases. It's like a bond. Um, you just kind of buy it and you're just trying to get some decent cash flow. So I'd wait, see what happens here. And same with kind of Algonquin Power. This is one I've been recently buying done way better performance trades for a way better valuation and the dividend actually increases on this one so if i would be more inclined to buy a utility i'd be leaning in this direction but still perhaps waiting you know it's trading at such a good bottom here in my opinion i mean if this one interests you but honestly for me personally guys i kind of like the us ones a little better something like a duke energy which again these things always underperform the markets but we're kind of buying them for the dividend increases in the stable cash flow and i mean duke is trading up 14 percent today really great starting yield at almost four percent something like a southern company i really like a lot trading up almost 12 percent on the year with a four percent starting uh, dividend this would be the direction i lean into and i mean look at southern companies dividend increases they just did one this year they do one every year and we can kind of just keep seeing this wonderful increase over time i mean we go back to 2015 they were paying a 52 cent dividend today. They're paying a 66 cent dividend. So we're not talking about like, you know, explosive dividend growth, but just great stability, bond like cash flow. And that's kind of where I'd mostly be paying attention to. But honestly, guys, when it comes down to what I would be buying from the dividend front today, I'm always looking for two things. Dividends that are increasing at a good yield, usually starting somewhere between the 3 to 5% range. And I'd also be looking for uh, stock growth. I, I really don't like buying companies that are trending in that downward 
direction. The trend is your friend, and it usually remains that way until you know some catalyst changes in the market. So personally, guys, I would be looking for banks. Um, right now, I really like the banking sector. I know a lot of people are saying it's overvalued, but you're still getting incredible starting yields. The banks here, especially in Canada, just started allowing dividend increases and in share buybacks, getting to the other side of this pandemic, which is wonderful, and they just did massive dividend increases. I mean, it's just a place of least resistance to growth and cash flow. So that's where I'm primarily going to be paying attention. I know I like the REITs uh, sector still a lot, but the REITs are getting expensive as well here, guys. So for a lot of capital, I'd be going financials. I think it's just a great place to be, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'd love to know what you think in that comment section below. So stay cool, stay awesome, and I look forward to catching you tomorrow.